morning to our CAU family. What a blessing. What a blessing it is to have you share in this 41st C. Eric Lincoln Lectureship Series. We pay homage to our ancestors as their spirit is here with us. Yeah, yeah. To our president, Dr. French, our provost, Dr. Charlene Gilbert, our dean, Dean Chandry, who is here with us, to our administration, our faculty, so glad to see you, especially to our students, and to the Lincoln family and special guests. Can we give them a CAU welcome? They're here. <laughs> this is one of the most prestigious lectureship series in America, mm -hmm. honoring probably the greatest black scholar in the sociology of religion in the history of our world, Dr. C. Eric Lincoln. His son is here with us. I won't ask Les to stand and the family members to stand. <laughs> Other than Dr. W.E.B. Du Bois, Dr. Lincoln was probably our most prolific ancestor faculty member. He taught here in 1954. His memoirs, his papers are here in Woodruff Library. Uh, if you look at the back of your program, you see the caliber of lecturers that have grace. This lecture, Alex Haley, Cornell West, Ghana Taylor, John Hope Franklin, just a myriad of tremendous scholars and ministers, civic leaders, pastors, so we're blessed today. You're blessed to be here, and we thank God for your presence. Just a few housekeeping. Uh, we're gonna, we are taping live for CAU TV, so we're gonna ask you to silence all electronic devices, please, if you silence those devices. And we're gonna ask you to remain until the benediction, the blessing of the benediction. We promise to get you out of here right at three o'clock. Well, I finally got a chuckle out of that. I do that every year. But it's a blessing to have you here. We're going to follow our program as outlined. Uh, one of our awesome students, Shania, is coming to lead us in prayer. And then our amazing Philharmonic choir is always here with us. And the program will follow in that order. Thank you. Spirit of the living God, we ask that you fall fresh in this room, Lord Father God, that you allow the presence of you and the ancestors to fill up every space, every corner, Lord Father God, that you come into this room, Lord God, that you clear out all anxieties, all feelings of frustration, distraction, Lord Father God, and fear that it cannot live in this room nor share the space with your presence and your spirit, Lord God. We ask that you fall fresh in, Lord Father God, and open up our hearts, Lord Father God. Open our hearts and our minds to be able to receive your word, Lord Father God, to receive what it is that we need, Lord Father God. We pray clarity over each and every being in this room, Lord Father God. We pray that you get, bring the power of the blood of Jesus over Dr. Daniel Black right now, Father. Father God, we pray that the power rises in him, the power of the living God of Elijah, Lord Father God, that you move in this room, Lord Father God, that you open up this space, Lord Father God, to be used, Lord Father God, for wisdom and knowledge to pour out into the fresh minds in this room, oh Lord Father God. We ask that you open up our hearts and our minds to receive you, oh Lord God, that the room is set, Lord Father God, that the atmosphere begins to shift Oh, Lord, Father God, that this atmosphere does not have to worry about distractions, Lord, Father God, nor tricks and plans of the enemy, Lord God, but that it will be an intentional atmosphere, Lord, Father God. Set your 
space, O oh Lord God. Set your atmosphere and enter into this room, Holy Spirit. Have your way and open up our hearts and minds, O oh God. I just feel open up hearts, Lord Father God. Hearts will be open, God. Hearts will be renewed in this place, Lord Father God, that we'll begin to connect to who we are, Lord Father God. Not who we once were, O oh Lord Father God, but who we were called to be, O oh Lord Father God. So I pray that you begin to open up the disconnect, Lord Father God, that you'll begin to connect us, Lord Father God, again to who we once were, Lord Father God, to who we are connected to, Lord Father God. I pray that the spirit of the living God reign fresh in this room, Lord Father God, and you have your way. You are true, Lord God, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Yeshua. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Such a great pleasure to see all my students here. Uh, thank you for coming. Thank you for making this a success. Greetings, esteemed colleagues, students, and guests. On behalf of President French, uh, Provost Gilbert, and the School of Arts and Sciences, I would like to welcome you all to the 41st anniversary of the C. Eric Lincoln Lectureship Series. The Lectureship series, series is chronicled in the congressional record as the oldest continuing lecture series honoring a black scholar in religion. Mm. That needs an applause. Thank you. Yeah, uh, led by Dr. Philip Dunstan, Chair, Department of Religion and Philosophy, this event is one of the highlights here at Clark Atlanta University. With its rich heritage, CAU recognizes one of its most influential pioneers, Dr. C. Eric Lincoln. This lectureship series is an impactful gathering that inspires students, faculty, and staff to uphold the foundation and legacy of CAU. As we move forward to proceed with this event, I would thank our special guest, Mr. Les Charles Lincoln, Dr. Lincoln's son, who is in attendance today. Thank you, sir. This year, we are delighted to have one of our own illustrious faculty, a colleague and an esteemed friend, Dr. Daniel Black. He's a professor in the Department of History. I don't want to take the thunder out of what, how Mr. Stevens is going to introduce him, but I must have to say this. His accolades are numerous uh, for me to mention here. 
But I must say that two of his most recent books, Don't Cry For Me and Black on Black, continues to receive accolades. Don't Cry For Me is a finalist for the Mark Twain American Literature Award and nominated for the Townsend Prize. And Black on Black is Zibi's most anticipated book of 2023. We have a great writer in front of us, in between us. So please prepare yourself to immerse in the lecture, What's Your Name by Dr. Black. Again, I want to thank you for attending this great event. Thank you and welcome again. Thanks. I guess it's my turn to speak. How y'all doing today? How y'all doing? How y'all doing? How y'all doing? Good morning, good morning, good morning. Okay, um, so today I will be introducing my fellow professor, the one that we all came to see, Dr. Daniel Black, okay? All right. Uh, if y'all can go in y'all program, it's, uh, you can follow me where I'm at. Um, I think it's the second page, okay? Dr. Daniel Black is an award-winning novelist, professor, activist, mentor, and public speaker. His published works include They Tell Me of a Home, The Sacred Place, Perfect Peace, 12 Gates to the City, The Coming, Listening to the Lambs, Don't Cry For Me, and Black on Black. In 2014, he won the Distinguished Writers Award for the Mid-Atlantic Writers Association. The Go On Girl National Book, Club, National Book Club named him Author of the Year in 2011 for his best-selling novel, Perfect Peace. Perfect Peace was also chosen as the 2014 selection for If All Arkansas Read the Same Book by Arkansas Center for the Book of Arkansas State Library. The novel has been reprinted more than 10 times and has been heralded as an American literary classic. Dr. Black has been nominated three times for the Townsend Literary Prize the Ernest J. Gaines Award, and the Furrow Grumbly Literary Prize, the Lambda Literary Award, and the Georgia Author of the Year Prize, and the Mark Twain American Voice in Literature. You got a lot of accolades. I just want you to know that. Okay. Dr. Black also works as a diversity consultant, having spoken at top-tier companies in America, such as Google, Chain Zuckerberg Initiative, AT&T, and Global Payments. He assists corporations with creating work environments in which all employees of every level and difference feel supported and valued. A native of Kansas City, Kansas, Black spent his formative years in rural Blackwell, Arkansas. He graduated from Clark College now, it's Clark Atlanta University, where he earned the prestigious Oxford Modest British Student Fellowship and studied abroad at Oxford University. He was then awarded a full fellowship to Temple University where he studied the With Black Arts Movement poet laureate Sonia Sanchez, and in 1992 earned his PhD in African American Studies. Dr. Black has spent the majority of his 30, 30 academic years as a professor of Ameri African American Studies at his beloved alma mater, Clark Atlanta University. Dr. Black lives in Atlanta and is the founder of Ningudu and Zinga rights of passage nation and mentoring society for people of African descent who seek to love themselves and build a world for character of character for their people. Currently, Dr. Black has completed the literary sequel to Don't Cry For Me, tentatively titled Isaac's Song. He is also working on part two of the coming and a black scripture titled The Good Book. Now, with all that being said, this man, if you know, if you have a, if you ever had his class or you ever had a conversation with Dr. Black, this is one of the most genuine people you will ever meet or ever encounter as a professor. Um, if you haven't had his class, I recommend you take it next semester. Um, he's one of the profound professors here at Clark Atlanta University, and he's the one that pushed me to strive to finish my second book and strive me to become a better script writer and pursue my career in film. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce you guys to Dr. Daniel Black.
Let's give the choir another hand. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. When African ancestors first arrived in the Americas, the first trauma they experienced was the changing of their names. During the treacherous Middle Passage, European crewmen called them cargo and treated them like beasts. They never heard their names, but y'all, they had names. All human beings have names. If those crewmen had had any humility at all, they would have at least asked our ancestors their names. And proudly and with great conviction, our ancestors would have said, I am Olufimi. I am Chisanganda. I am Abna. I am Kwame. I am Alatanga. I am Usman. I am Baba Tunde. I am Ya Asantewa. I am Ligongo. I am Gushwa. I am Zolewa. Some of them would have said, I am Damani, or I am Zingisa. A few might have said, I am Afia. I am Ajwa. I am Amenata. I am Faraji. Some of them might have said, I am Adenike. I am Ajo. I am Akachi. My name is Abubakar, or Chidike, or Chisamaku. If white folks had had the courtesy to treat our people as human beings, they would have realized that they had enslaved Ifeoma, and Ekundayo, and Ifeitayo, and Bamidele, and Mariamu, and Ngozi, and Inkaruka. They would have realized they had enslaved Okankwo, and Olamide, and Olayinka, and Timitope, and Osundwagwike, and Titilayo, and Uzochi, and Wambui, and Molefi, but they never asked for their names. Yet once ships landed in the New World, captors got busy changing our names. And they changed our names because they learned very quickly that if they didn't, they would have no slaves. Because see, it wasn't simply that Africans came with names. They came with names that had meanings. Meanings like, he walks upright like his fathers. Or meanings like, she will fight like a lion. Meanings like, everything he touches will obey him. Meanings like, conflict will never defeat her. Or meanings like, this warrior is the one we called for. Meanings like, never belittle your character. Meanings like, this child is priceless. Or look in her eyes and see God. God have mercy, help me y'all. Meanings like, this one carries himself like the ancestors or this is the singer of our songs, or meanings like, she will lead us to the promised land. Don't you see? These names didn't agree with our bondage. These names stood in opposition to our enslavement. These names told us who we were and why we'd been sent. These names announced to whom we belonged and what we were doing, not just in America, but on this planet. That's the power of a name. We come from people who understood that what you call a thing is what it will be. We knew that if you called a child ugly, he or she would struggle with self-image for the rest of their lives. We also knew that if you deemed them beautiful, if you called them royal, see, then what they would understand is that they would walk with their heads held high. And this is why American slavers changed our names, y'all, because they wanted people who questioned themselves. 
They wanted a black people who doubted themselves. Come on, somebody. They wanted a people who fought themselves and who demeaned themselves. They wanted people who thought lowly of themselves and thus believed they had no right to walk in this world. They needed a black people who might one day call themselves stupid, who might one day call themselves dumb, who might one day call themselves ignorant, unwise, because then those people would enslave themselves. So plantation owners gave us their names. Woo, y'all help me, to, God have mercy, help me today that we might learn to love them, not us. So they called us Charles and Philip and Timothy and Mary and Jane and Betty and George and Abraham. <clears throat> they called us Sarah and Anna and Agnes and Adam and Anthony and Ben and Daniel and David. They called us Elijah and Frank and Henry and Lisa and Jack and Lucy and Elizabeth and Nelson and Peter. They called us names like Polly and Primus and Richard and Sandy and Scott and William and, 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 and Solomon and, and Thaddeus and Walter. Every name they had. And by giving us their names, they gave us their consciousness. By giving us their names, they gave us their consciousness. And by giving us their consciousness, they gave us their God. And by giving us their God, they gave us their religion. And by giving us their religion, they gave us their worldview. And by giving us their worldview, we learned to love them not ourselves. So whatever they called us is what we called us. We were desperate and wanted to survive in this new land, and we believed that in order to survive, we had to comply with their epistemological demands. They had proven their willingness to destroy us if we defied them. So we started playing the game of assimilation. Slowly, over time, our tongues and minds lost the sound of African names. So we called our children what we hoped would be their salvation in this land of Babylon. Yet I've come back here today to tell you that white names on black flesh don't save black flesh. They still sold Charles away anyway. They still raped Mary and Sarah and Esther, they still lashed Billy Joe and John and Catherine and David. And then years later, they lynched Anthony and Mark and Susan and Daniel and Elijah. Their names didn't save them, but it's because their names couldn't save us. Their names didn't have our strength. Their names didn't equal our power. Their names didn't remind us of our black grandeur. Their names told our spirit that we needed to be like them. Yet when we tried, they were offended. There was no way to win, seemingly. So Nat and Denmark and Gabriel and Harriet started fighting and pissed off white supremacy. And this is the secret of black survival and success in America. What you call yourself, what you call yourself and what you're clear it means. As early as the 1800s, folks like Araminta Ross reclaimed the power to name herself. Her captor called her Araminta, but when she got ready to run, she said, name's Harriet. I run in the power of my mama. She did the African naming tradition, although in English. She knew that the name Araminta could not carry her back and forth from slavery to freedom because she didn't know what it meant. But taking her mother's name allowed her to also take her mother's strength. And thus she became the deliverer. She became the mighty Moses. She became the mighty fortress, the bridge over troubled water for a people who couldn't see a way out. 
and not just her. Others of that era did likewise. Isabella Baumfrey knew that that was not her name. She knew that the name would not carry her destiny. And so she renamed herself Sojourner Truth and became the clarion call for black people's freedom and justice. By the 1960s, black people all over this country finally discovered that what you call yourself determines really what you think about yourself. And they began the difficult process of shedding European names and assuming the names of their people who first stepped off those ships. For instance, Cassius Clay became, come on somebody, Leroy Jones became a Mary Baraka. Paulette Williams became Intazaki Shange. Don L. Lee became Haki Marabuti. Stokely Carmichael became Kwame Toure. Malcolm Little became Malcolm X, who became El Haj Malik El Shabazz. Then later, Dana Owens became Queen Latifah. Marguerite Johnson became Maya Angelou. The point here is that what you call yourself matters. It really matters. What you answer to matters. Y'all, a name signifies what you think you worth. It orders your place in the universe. A name negotiates your life force through the dimensions of time. A name aligns your spirit and your desires. It conjures your ancestors to prepare your way. A name is not simply what we call you. It's what God thinks about you. It's the peace of God in you. Your name is your calling. It is your contract with your breath. It is your memory articulated. It is our clarity of what you doing here. When you call a person out of his or her name, you pause their life force. You interrupt their breath. You intrude upon their God-ordained destiny. And when we agree with any name that is not our name, we tell God to cancel our life mission. We tell God that God got it wrong. This is why calling ourselves niggas is so dangerous. Yep, I said it. This word means we agree with our enslavement. It means our personhood does not require respect. It means we ain't got to love ourselves. It means we are in fact what white enslavers said we are. It means indeed that we can't imagine ourselves any more divine than they could. It means we need their ownership of our bodies in order for us to believe we have any worth at all. To be a nigger is really to be nameless. For this word is not an identifier of being, but rather an announcement of a person's condition. It is the notion that since I don't know who I am, I will agree to be whatever the hell you want me to be. This is devastating because the imagination of white supremacy says blackness is unworthy of divinity. It says that black people should be glad that racial progress is being made however slow. It says that as long as black rap artists degrade themselves, white supremacy don't mind. But we know bad, better. We are not niggas, y'all. We are not colored. We are not people of color. We are not brown ones. We are not Afro-Americans. We are not the dark ones. And really, we ain't black people either. What we really are, really, is proud African people. Strong, resilient, amazing, incredible, gorgeous, brilliant, unstoppable African people who most folks in this world are dying to be like. The worst thing in the world we've done is to agree to call ourselves something less than what we is. Don't y'all get it? Even with nicknames, black people from time to time were trying to live with identifiers that they had created, names that meant something to them if to no one else. Yes, nicknames, we called people Cookie. Come on, somebody. <laughs> we called folk Pookie. We called people Peanut. Come on, come on. We call them Rayway and Sweetie Pie. 
All these names that meant something to us, we named them things that were sweet and funny because this endeared them to our hearts. We knew the cost of calling people names that their spirits rejected. In fact, I've come by to tell you to avoid calling people names that reduce their humanity. Do not invite them into a diminished existence. Do not, via the wrong name, conjure manifestations of their lower selves. Don't submit to that which they have buried deep down within. When you say a person's name, you perform an act of love. That's really what it is. Each mentioning beckons within their spirit the coalition of meaning and consciousness. Each mentioning implores a person's destiny forward and promises the unveiling of God's intention for that life. A name is sacred, y'all. That's why our ancestors said, there's something about the name of Jesus. It's the sweetest name I know. Ooh, let me come out of that, let me come out of that. Our folks said there's liberty in the name of Jesus. They said there's power in the name of Jesus. Oh, I feel something coming over me. They said, listen, listen, there's deliverance in the name. of. They knew that a name could shift the very universe if people used it right. So don't let people call you anything other than what your spirit agrees with. Don't let folks play with your power by calling you something degrading. Don't answer when people try to call you something simply for sexual pleasure. Don't think it's okay to be a bitch because you, we friends. I mean, you know what I'm saying? You know, we just be playing. You know what I'm saying? That's my nigga. That's my homie. No, no, no. It ain't never okay. It ain't never cool. It ain't never funny. It ain't never casual. If God can't be it, I can't either. One of the most creative spaces for black names is on musical artists. Over the years, some of them have had names that make us proud, like the Supremes, right? Sam Cooke and the Soul Stirrers. Some of their names electrify, like, like NBA Never Broke Again. <laughs> yeah, 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 right? Public Enemy, Buster Rhymes, Dr. Dre. Earth, Wind, and Fire. Come on, somebody. The Four Tops, Parliament and Funkadelic, Boys to Men, Kirk Franklin and the Family, yes, Bob Marley and the Wailers, Prince, Stevie Wonder, Muddy Waters, y'all get the point. But there are some people who just, they just didn't get it quite right. And their name signifies something that I'm not sure makes us proud. It seems to me now that, that all the young rappers Young men want to be babies. Little baby, duh baby. Uh, we got a lot of grown babies. I started asking around. I started doing a little research about some of these names. Who is Ski Mask Slump God? One group said, it's that they call themselves bitches is crazy. What? Finesse two times. 69 boys? What? Deep Throat Thug. <laughs> what? If a person ain't careful, y'all, this is really serious. This is why you come to a black school. If a person's not mighty careful, if a person's not mighty careful, you will cancel your own future. Your name can do that by itself. In the book of Genesis, God gives us an example of the power of names. It says, God says, let there be light. And there was light. Come on, somebody. And God saw that the light was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. And God named the light day. And the darkness God called night. Come on, somebody. And God made the firmament and divided the waters under the firmament. Uh-huh. And God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together in one place. And God called the dry land earth. In other words, in other words, in other words, God named everything. And then God gave Adam the right and the authority to name cattle and creeping things and birds and plants and roses and every kind of tree and fish and fowl known to humans. The point here is that what you name a thing is what it will be. And this is how the creation story goes. Even today, y'all, we're naming black babies original names. That's a good thing. Names we've created. But sometimes I'm not sure we know the meaning of them. Names like Bonquisha. 
Latavius, Mercedes, what? Chardonnay, oh, Lamangelo, right? Deandrelus, Harlemisha, Coulandria. These names aren't bad or wrong. The problem is that we didn't assign them meaning. That's the problem. See, if Lamangelo actually meant he walks in high character, or if Coulandria meant her power is in her beauty, or even if Chardonnay meant her ancestors know her, these names could transform the children who bear them. But without accompanying meanings of value and cultural worth, such names usually leave black kids fighting in schoolyards as other kids mock them. These names demonstrate that black parents want original, unique, innovative identities for their babies. But they often simply don't know that we came from people who already had them. I encourage us to comb our history and find the names of those who came here in chains, and then we'll know why we survived. We'll know why they didn't destroy every single African. We'll know why black blood can never be obliterated. What people don't understand is black blood is ever present, it's ever moving. We come from people who sing about the blood. It's always the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood, the power of the blood. We'll know why one day we're here because we're descendants of people who knew their name and they knew who their God was. They called God sometimes Allah, or Shukwu, or Mawulisa, Olurun, Mulungu, Anyame, Kalunga, Yala, Inkolo, Inkolo, Yahweh. And then, then, when we were stripped of our African language, what black ancestors did is a magical thing. We started calling God not by God's name, but by God's function. Black people started saying, he is the bright and the morning star. Come on, somebody. Black folks said, he is a battle axe in the time of a battle. Come on, somebody. Black folks start saying, God is a bridge over troubled water. Black folks said, he's the lily of the valley. Come on, somebody. They said, he is Jehovah Jireh. He's my provider. Black folks started saying God is a doctor in a sick room and a lawyer. Come on, somebody. We start saying God is fairer than 10,000. We said God is the prince of peace. God is a friend to the friendless. We used to say God is a wheel in the middle of a wheel. See, a name makes all the difference in the world. It brings joy and fulfillment when you know who you are. So whatsoever you do, young people, claim a name if you don't have one. Get one, find one, make it up. Yeah. But whatsoever you do, get you a name that tells the world who the hell you are. Don't walk around like you don't know. Make sure other people know. We come from people who will let Folks, know who we are. You don't answer to pss, pss, pss. You don't answer to that. You walk on. Somebody doesn't know your name. You don't answer that. Hey, what up, my nigga? You don't answer to that. You don't answer that. You don't answer to that. Until they call your name, you walk on. You walk on. But what you got to do is you got to get you a name. You might get with an elder. I don't care how you get it, but get you a name, because the day is going to come when you meet God face to face, and God's going to ask you one question. The first question is, what's your name? And if you can't hold your head up and speak your name, that's the only reason you go to hell. Thank you.
mess with that. I ain't gonna mess with that. In the spirit of the black church, just look at the person sitting next to you and ask them, what's your name? Uh, one more time for Dr. Daniel Black. Can we praise God for him? Uh, I'm trying not to mess with that. My God, what a blessing. What a blessing. What a blessing. Thank you, Dr. Black. The presence of God, the presence of the ancestors are in this place. We want to certainly recognize the fact that Dr. Sarah Lincoln did coin the lyrics to our alma mater. He is forever remembered here at Clark Atlanta University. He penned the lyrics to our alma mater. And our choir is going to lead us in that. Our pastor of our institution, Dr. Miles, is going to close us out with our benediction. We would just want to tell our students, our faculty, if you remain, uh, come to the stage right after the benediction for pictures. Uh, our guests will be joining us for the first annual Lucy L. Lincoln Legacy luncheon. We've named the luncheon in her name. Mrs. Lincoln attended every lecture and last year was the 40th anniversary of the lecture and the morning after she transitioned and went to be with the Lord. So her spirit is here strong with us and we thank God for her. We want to thank God for all of our uh, lectureship participants and to our choir as we sing Rain Clark Atlanta. Dr. Black another hand clap of praise this afternoon. I am Yah, Thursday born warrior sent by God to free and to be free. Brothers and sisters today, who are you? I am the great I am, God is peace, love, hope, joy, kindness, perseverance, and on and on and on. Claim your name today and live into your truth, the truth that God sent you to realize. Go in peace. Go in love, go with God who named you and loves you. Be blessed, amen. God bless you, CAU family, thank you so much. Will our faculty, our student majors come on up for photographs? Our guests will be joining us uh, for the Lucy Lincoln Legacy Luncheon. Just come on up front and join us up front. Thank you so much. Faculty, thank you. Dean, thank you.